Jess walked into the bar about five minutes later. It didn't bother me. Part of me was relieved that she had turned up at all. It had been months since we talked. Seeing her made me wish I'd reached out earlier, months earlier. She was dressed all in black. Her smile was bright red. I don't ever remember telling her that I liked that on a girl. But it felt like a good sign. We hugged. The nerves went away as soon as her arms wrapped around me. And before anything was said, I apologised. It wasn't a hard apology to me because I knew it was the right thing to do. She struggled to keep eye contact, as I said it, like she was almost ashamed I was saying it. It didn't stop me. The words came with ease, like my mind had been practicing it for my whole life. And it felt like I had. She apologized for it coming to us. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't need to. Just seeing her again made everything okay. Everything that had happened since I last saw those bright eyes of hers, brimming with tears, it was nothing compared to sitting across from her. Just the one more time. I got us drinks. We told each other our highlight reels of how the year had so far panned out for us. I told her about how my life seemed to want to drag me down. The grieving, the job loss, the loss of direction and temptation to fall. But here I was. She told me about parties and adventures, lovers met and lost. And it didn't hurt to hear any of this from her. Just hearing her voice was enough to make everything okay. And here I was. Not knowing if everything would be okay after this night. What if this night would be okay, but so far, everything was okay. We moved to a bench outside talking to a man who was looking to bum a cigarette. She looked unfazed that she was still smoking. I was planning to hide mine, seeing as the last time we were together, she was trying to quit. He rolled the cigarette, but we both did. All three of us chatted before he disappeared into the mouth one night. She'd be the first name out of my mouth when it came to telling stories of my time in Australia and the last memory I'd have of it. Looking into her eyes, I think she knew it. And if she didn't, one day I hope she does. I plan to tell her about the script I'd written of our weekend together. How I'd written it as nothing more than an exercise to keep busy. But found myself making it with newfound friends a few weeks later. I never did. I still have to this day. One day, I have the courage to tell her and ask for her permission. And hopefully, I'll be looking into her eyes when I ask. As the light drew on and the bar emptied out, we built a small collection of empty glasses and bottles on our table. The small mole hell of ash became a mountain too as we emptied ourselves of our wars and problems. Talked like lovers from previous lives checking each other's war wounds. The wars of love and life are ongoing. Whether you have the same sparring partner for years or just one night, it's always a relief to find someone that you can sit and ease the pains of once in a while. We moved to her home, something that she proudly gave me a tour of before we found ourselves in the kitchen. She made herself a round of avocado and toast, singing the praises of a healthy diet and a yoga-based life as she did so. I kept my self-destructive diet of cigarettes, black coffee, alcohol and minimal food to myself. And then the moment arrived. I'd wondered if it would. 
I'd hoped for her. But I didn't bet on its appearance. We kissed. And it continued. For seconds. For minutes. I wish it could have been forever. We met each other like souls that had waited a lifetime. And as weary partners that had been kept apart by a disaster. She led me to the bedroom and we made love. I wish it could have been all night and on for eternity. But being with Jess is like no woman I've ever met before. And I knew it would have its inevitable climax. I apologise to whatever woman comes after her. She was lust without the disgust. Love without the investment. Happiness with the impending sadness. I awoke the next morning to an empty bed. She left for work. From what I'd remembered of the night before, it was a job she enjoyed and I was happy for her. I took a shower and winced as the water mixed with the iodine she dabbed into the marks she left on my back. I left her place, I didn't want to, but I did. I sent her a message as I rode home on the tram. We spoke for a while about seeing each other again. My farewell plans kept us apart for the last few days of my time in Australia. But I'm glad I saw you again, Jess. Wherever you end up in life, I hope our paths cross again.